Hello, welcome back to another video. In front of me here I have one of my favorite computers that I own that doesn't quite get the screen time that it deserves. That being my Commodore VIC-20. And it's never really gotten to like star in a video until today. We're not actually going to be looking at the VIC-20 itself today, but we're going to be looking at the Commodore VIC-20 Super Expander. And no, this does not change the size of your VIC-20. So, uh... Sorry to disappoint you if you wanted a bigger VIC-20, but this adds a bunch of new commands to BASIC for doing graphics and sound, as well as it also adds 3K of RAM to the system. This has to be probably one of my favorite Commodore VIC-20 accessories, so let's get right into it. criticisms that people seem to have with the Commodore VIC-20 is that A doesn't have a lot of RAM, it only has 5 kilobytes, which isn't really a lot even by 1980 standards, and the second being that it has no built-in graphics and sound commands in BASIC. Commodore VIC-20 Super Expander sets out to solve both of those problems, bringing the total RAM from 5k up to 8k and adding said graphics and sound commands. Installing the Super Expander is fairly easy, you just stick it in the cartridge slash expansion port in the back of the VIC-20 and boot it up. Upon startup, the first thing you'll probably notice is that it's now reporting that there's 6.5k free instead of just 3.5k. Even though the computer has been expanded to 8k, it still needs about like 1.5k or so for the screen. And while we're on the topic of adding RAM to the VIC-20, this RAM expander does not shift the screen RAM down. What do I mean by that? Looking at this diagram of the memory map of the VIC-20, without any RAM expander, the VIC-20's screen RAM is at the top of the computer's RAM, but only insert say like an 8K or a 16K RAM expander, it gets moved to the bottom of the screen's RAM so, th so that basic RAM could be just one straight continuous area of memory that isn't interrupted by the screen thing in the middle. But 3K RAM expanders, both the Super Expander and just the 3K RAM expander that doesn't add any commands, inserts itself below the computer's internal memory. The screen RAM does not get moved, but the start of your basic program gets moved. We don't just have extra memory now, obviously, we now have a bunch of extra graphics commands, like draw, circle, point, and paint really go into too much detail about how to actually use these commands to create graphics, I might make that a whole other video on its own. But I want to show you some example programs that use these graphics commands. This first one's one that I made, it just sort of draws this little picture on the screen. Ah, simply a masterpiece. I should make that an NFT. These next few programs are programs that are in the manual that you can type in. Okay, so I know what some of you might be wondering. How in the world is the Commodore VIC-20 doing seemingly bitmapped graphics? I thought it was a text-only machine. Well, yes, it is still technically a text-only machine that can only display text characters, but those text characters can be redefined. We can sort of exploit this in a way by redefining, by like dynamically redefining the characters to produce bitmap graphics. And if we shrink the screen down so there's only 256 character cells, we can have a unique character for each cell, and then if we set it up so that character 1, or character 0 actually, 
is in the top left hand corner and character 256 is in the bottom right hand corner and so that the characters are stored in ROM in the same order that they're displayed on screen. Now we just dynamically redefined that character set. We can essentially create a bitmap graphics mode. I know that maybe wasn't the best explanation and if you didn't understand it basically just know that the characters are basically just being dynamically redefined to create bitmap graphics. So now into the sound commands portion of the super expander. And one really weird thing that I'm not totally sure why they did it this way is you actually have to use the print command to play sounds. Like playing sounds is part of the print command. It's kind of weird. I don't know why they did this. There might be some reason for it like deep down within the machine code that I don't know about. But anyway, so you type print open quotes and they have to type this weird control character that tells it that we want to basically print sound. You type this character by hitting control and then this left facing arrow on your keyboard. And that'll actually have to set the volume. We're going to use that by using V. So we're going to go volume nine. T for tempo, S for speaker. Speaker is just basically voice, but V was already taken by volume, so I ended up just calling it speaker. We're just gonna be speaker one, octave two. Now we can type some notes, and then we can go octave three for the final C there. Something to note with the tempo is that the lower the number is, the faster it goes. So if we said to say, as you can hear, it's quite a bit faster. We go tempo zero, which seems to be the fastest. I tried setting it to a negative number and that didn't really do anything. It was just the same as zero. And same thing with the opposite. You can go, I don't know, something like tempo seven. As you can tell, that's a fair bit slower. It's also worth noting that different voices on the VIC-20 sound hardware cover different octave ranges. You can, you can hear that with me uh, sort of just messing around with the different voices and octaves here. And you could create some pretty interesting musical compositions using these commands, but I'm too lazy to do that right now. So I know you guys are probably dying to see what's inside this thing. But before I do the grand reveal, is it going to be A? some RAM chips and a ROM chip, or B. Okay, I can't think of anything else it could possibly be. And there we go, if you guessed A, you are correct. We have six 512 byte static RAM chips totaling three kilobytes. There appears to be a capacitor or something, probably for filtering the power. And we have a four kilobyte ROM chip. My particular one seems to be from the 38th week of 1982. I believe this product came out in 1981 though. Something I find kind of interesting is that there's actually a spot for a second ROM chip below the ROM chip. Makes you wonder if they had a larger version of this planned, like with 8K and maybe some more commands, and but then they just changed it last minute when they managed to fit it all into 4K. I don't know, that's just speculation. It could just be that they were originally planning to use lower capacity ROM chips, but whatever. It was something worth pointing out. Okay, so that's just about it for the Commodore VIC-20 Super Expander. A pretty neat uh, little piece of hardware. Pretty interesting little accessory for your VIC-20. Really opens up a whole new world of uh, possibilities with those graphics and sound commands which wouldn't otherwise be possible on a stock VIC-20. I do have a couple small criticisms about it. First one being there's no dedicated box command for drawing a square or rectangle on the screen. You have to do it with this really long draw command and connect all the points together, which is kind of annoying compared to other basics. I also wish they would have included a machine language monitor as part of this cartridge. I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity there. I think both these things were not included to try to fit it all into a 4K of ROM. It is fairly impressive that this all does fit in just 4 kilobytes. But despite that, it's still really cool. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.